Indiana's ag bioscience economy is growing and new research finds sectors of the economy are growing fast. Whether it's venture-backed ag tech companies or Indiana's strength in animal health, food production, or even plant science, Indiana is making a giant impact on the global ag bioscience, food, and ag tech industry. Hi, I'm Mitch Frazier. I'm CEO of Agrinovus Indiana and really delighted today to be joined by two incredible minds in economic research and analysis from Techconomy Partners, Simon Tripp and Deborah Cummings. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Deb and Simon were the masterminds behind the new research where we took a look at what the Indiana ag bioscience economy is, what's part of it, how fast it's growing, and uh, the work is absolutely astounding. You can download the research online at agronovusindiana.com slash research. That's agronovusindiana.com slash research. Let's jump in. Simon, you're up first. We talk a lot about the ag bioscience economy. Agronovus Indiana is focused on growing the ag bioscience economy here in Indiana. Maybe if you would help define what ag bioscience is and maybe give us some ideas of what it looks like here in Indiana. Right. The reason we call it ag bioscience is obviously agriculture is, is fundamentally a, a life science at its heart. Um, and when we talk about ag bioscience, we're really talking about the, the innovative components that feed into production agriculture, the, the advanced development of seeds and agricultural chemicals, um, those input, veterinary medicines, example for livestock, as well as the value added activity that occurs uh, post farm gate in terms of uh, producing value added foods, uh, functional nutrition, uh, all of those sorts of products. So it's fundamentally a scientific driven um, industry. Really helpful. And Deb, you were the quarterback on this research report. Really fun to work with you on pulling this together. As we look at the ag bioscience economy here in Indiana, what did you find? How, how big is this when we look at economic output and we look at employment? And then I love the framework that you put together on these four platforms, sub verticals, whatever pronoun we want to apply to them. Maybe walk us through that if you would, please. Sure. So we did some interesting work um, on your behalf this time, which I think really advanced the thought process. And what we attempted to do was really to define how four key areas of innovation are really driving the vast majority of Indiana's ag bioscience growth in the state. And so the, the four innovation platforms, if you will, that's what we call them, that we're looking at is really how innovation in value-added food and nutrition is driving economic growth, how innovation in plant science and crop protection research and, and new models of development are driving growth, how innovation in agricultural equipment and technologies and systems and kind of all this you know, fascinating world of ag tech and drone technology and you know, all these things that we hear about on the modern farm is driving mm -hmm. innovation in Indiana. And then certainly how animal health and nutrition with all the livestock and poultry production in the state is driving growth. And, and all four of these areas, obviously at the end of the day are helping to drive economic prosperity within agricultural production and distribution fields. And so that's kind of the fifth area that we examine. And so when you look at Indiana's ag biosciences from that area, you know, we understand that this is a huge um, area of economic opportunity. It employs over 146,000 workers within the state. It grew by over 5% since 2012. And I think maybe even while employment is critical at the end of the day, it only really tells one side of the story. And so when you think about overall output of these ag bioscience sectors, um, you know, grew just incredibly and in, in the impact and contribution is so significant. So, you know, $76 billion in impact the ag bioscience sector uh, provides for the state of Indiana, you know, that that's, uh, 27 and a half billion in state gross domestic products. So just incredibly important to the industry uh, and to the state and, and some significant growth in particular areas of the economy. Really powerful. Deb, I love the, 
the structure that you put together. When we talk about the overall ag bioscience economy, north of $50 billion directly, your, your indirect and induced number, the, the north of 70 billion, it's a really powerful, powerful parallel. I think the one thing that struck me as I, I went through the data with you and with Simon, with the team, was as we, some comparative analysis, right? Big numbers are big and it's hard to really have context for them. When we look at production agriculture, maybe walk us through the comparative there, production agriculture being a part of the 50, 52 billion, if memory serves correctly, uh, what does that look like maybe compared to some of the other subverticals? Sure, and I apologize, I'm trying to find some, some data uh, tables real quick. Um, so yeah, when we look at the total output of 52 billion, um, sorry, 52 million um, it, across the state in output. So this is the production, uh, you know, sales, if you want to kind of think of that. Um, 13 million of that is in agricultural production. So critically important to the state. But when you're looking at the other innovation platforms, you know, 29 million is related yeah. I'm sorry, Simon. Oh, Deb, it is billion. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Twenty-nine billion is related to value-added food and nutrition. So that is actually the largest of the four innovation platforms, and even outperforms agricultural production and distribution. I shouldn't say outperforms; is even larger. Is another right. way of thinking of it. Um, but the other platforms are also critical. You know, animal health and nutrition is a four billion uh, output to the state. Uh, just over four, four point three, followed very closely behind in plant science and crop protection, which uh, is four billion, and then agricultural equipment and technology systems at nearly two billion. So all critically important to the state's uh, growth. It is a staggering stat, Simon, as we look at thirteen billion in production agriculture and comparing it to some of these other verticals. I'd love to dig it before we dig into these individual verticals, these individual innovation platforms that we call them, is you also led the research, you both led the research back in 2014 that was really the cornerstone of Agronovis's creation. And in this report, you do a brilliant job of going back and saying, let's look at 2012 data, let's look at 2015 data, and let's look at 2018 data, 2018 being the most recent available Maybe if you would just give some insight, some context, some things that you saw as you look at this growth from 2012 to 2018, the six year period, how did the sector grow and were there any surprises in these innovation platforms as we look at growth? Yeah, so overall the growth was 6% as we define, you know, ag biosciences writ large, including production agriculture. Um, but actual production agriculture was the slowest growing of the areas, the actual ag biosciences technology sectors that we've been looking at, evaluated food and nutrition, plant sciences and crop protection, ag equipment uh, and animal health and nutrition, those have grown much faster, um, anywhere from a, from 8.6% in the animal health and nutrition space up to 13% uh, in evaluated food and nutrition. Right. Um, the one outlier has been the, the plant sciences and crop protection space, but it, it, that's a, a different industry to the others in that it tends to be dominated by very large multinational companies. Um, and there's been a lot of mergers and acquisitions activities that right. occur. You know, Corteva has, has it now has you know, grown out of Dow AgriSciences, and there have been consolidations. So actually employment and output declined somewhat in Indiana. Um, in that one cluster, but we expect that to reverse moving forward and then continue to grow. We're talking with Simon Tripp and Deborah Cummings from Techonomy Partners, digging into new research on the Indiana ag bioscience economy. You can download the research online at agronovisindiana.com slash research. That's agronovisindiana.com slash research. Deb, I, I wanna go to you as we look at all the pieces of this puzzle, I think the big surprise to me as a guy who's been in ag here for a while in Indiana, a guy who grew up in Indiana, was value-added food and nutrition uh, becoming uh, a, a really the longest tentpole, if you will, in the overall ag bioscience economy, more than 2x production agriculture. If you could maybe give us some ideas, some insight into what is in the food innovation platform here in Indiana, maybe some of the companies that are there, and just help us understand size and employment, if you would, please. Certainly. So I think that um, when we think about our own grocery stores and what we eat every day, you know, I don't think we always think about the advancements that's occurring in um, 
the value added food and nutrition space. And so everything from aseptic packaging. And what I mean by that is think about the difference in the grocery store, what used to be in the perimeter of the grocery store. So fresh meat, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, fresh dairy. We're now through advancements and in innovation, really being able to make them shelf stable, be able to make a uh, longer life and bring them to the middle, the rows, if you will, of the grocery store. And that has incredible opportunity um, for growth, both around the world, because obviously to be able to grow and produce and then ship these goods, we have to be able to have much more shelf stable. But it also has incredible opportunities just as our changes and, and what we choose to consume. So it gives us healthier foods that are longer uh, lasting and opportunities. Um, so I think when we think about that, the other area that there's been huge growth in is the opportunity around the nutrition within the foods. And so much of, as we think back to to healthy foods or diet foods of the 70s and 80s, you know, that they weren't good tasting, they, they had other uh, potential impacts on our digestion system. And, you know, we all remember the stories. And so flavors and uh, how things are textile, you know, how we how we feel in our mouth and all of those mm -hmm. things. And so all of the research and innovation that's going in in that space in terms of just what it tastes like, how it feels in our mouth, what it smells like. And then that doesn't even get into really a huge area of growth um, that's occurring around plant-based proteins and what that's going to mean for not only our future here in the United States, but again, as we look at more economies around the world demanding more protein-based food, we only have so much land, we only have so many resources, and how do we meet that demand? And there's a lot of innovation uh, being driven there. And so as we look at companies in Indiana, they're, they're everything from you know, companies that you've known for a long time that are that are producing foods that are on your grocery store shelves, um, but but through to really interesting areas of innovation. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, this value added food and nutrition space really jumped out to us in the report. Um, when we looked at that platform back in 2015 in our original study, um, in the previous five years leading up to 2015, there were no startup ventures in that space that received angel funding or venture capital funding. Um, you know, it was a very, it was a certain lack of dynamism uh, in that industry. Since 2015, um, with Agronovas concentrating on the development of this cluster, um, there has now been 23 new companies started receiving venture capital and angel funding, uh, 40 uh, major risk capital deals valued at $57.9 million in investment. Um, it's it's really a space that's received attention from investors um, and is seen as a, as a dynamic technology-based economic development cluster growing in Indiana. And it's incredible when you look at those numbers, Simon, and you think this is 2018 data. And so yep. if we look at what has just recently happened in the pandemic and the amount of venture that has flowed into anything related to food supply chain, food innovation, Deb, as you talk through, you know, as we as we do this report again in the future and we work together and, and look back at what are these inflection points, I think we're going to continue to see food and human nutrition really being an economic catalyst here in Indiana. I think we're well positioned to continue to fuel growth in that space. You know, the second fastest or the second largest subsector of the Indiana Ag Bioscience Economy, according to your research, again, available at agronovusindiana.com slash research agronovusindiana.com slash research was animal health and nutrition. And, and this is one that's really exciting. If we look back to 2018, the, the, where we snapped the chalk line for this research and pulled the data, that was the year, September of the year, if memory serves correctly, is when Elanco had their IPO. They came out of Lilly and really became an industry leader and created that platform that we've since seen grow here in Indiana. If you could maybe share a little bit, uh, Simon, if you would jump in, share maybe a little bit about what we found in animal health and maybe some of those companies that are operating here in Indiana. Yeah, I mean, the animal health and nutrition is, is an incredibly important and dynamic space um, with good opportunities for the future. Um, what's, what's behind it is just really good global trends in the demand for, for food animal products. Um, population is increasing, uh, global wealth is increasing, and as global wealth increases, so too does the demand for higher quality diets and, and the protein that comes from animal products. 
So Indiana having strength in that sector bodes very well for the future. Um, as you mentioned, you know, Elanco is certainly one of the global leaders in that space. Um, but it's also a space where we've seen uh, new venture formation uh, occurring. Um, we highlight four companies in the report uh, that have received significant venture funding um, from 2015 through to, through to 2020. Um, it's a diverse space um, with uh, you know, a, a range of, of different companies, uh, some of which are now starting to cluster around Purdue. Um, but there's, you know, there's interesting research occurring inside of, of companies that you might not think of sort of being in animal health and nutrition. Um, companies like Maple Leaf Farms uh, up in Northeast Indiana, um, you know, who, who are doing advanced work in duck production, um, a, a product that Indiana is leading in. So it, it's an interesting space that has lots of opportunities for the future. It is interesting when we look at this this construct that we just talked through, where we talk about food and we talk about animal health, and there is this collision. Simon, you talk about this often, and I appreciate it. We even talk about it a bit in the re research, is this collision of life science. When we start thinking about where are the connection points, why is Indiana uniquely competitive, or why does Indiana have unique competitive advantage, it is our strength in human health. It is our strength with the nation's largest medical school and Eli Lilly and Roche and all of these traditional life science companies who have built talent ecosystems that now are seeing affect in a very positive way what's happening right here in the ag bioscience. Really fun work. And I, I think that the next logical step is, is to hit the next largest sub vertical or innovation platform called plant science and crop protection. And Deb would love for you to walk through, you mentioned this early on, you know, this has been an area that has, has faced some challenge when it comes to consolidation, but still holds tremendous, tremendous opportunity as we think about what's ahead in this space. So Mitch, I hate to do this, but I'm going to throw that question to Simon. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> the final platform, because I'm excited about some work that's going on in Purdue, and and, and Simon has been tracking more of some of the the global trends and in, in crop Love it. science. Yeah, I mean, this is um, Purdue's good in in all of the platforms, but the investments that we've seen made in Purdue over the last five years in advanced plant sciences and crop protection, I mean, it really parallels the expertise that there is in the state in industry. Um, you've now got you know, two major phenotyping facilities that give Purdue University really advanced capabilities in advancing in plant sciences. Um, field phenotyping, um, so not just controlled environment phenotyping that they're doing. They've hired new faculty in this space. They form the Plant Sciences Institute. Um, and as we talk about when we get to the digital ag side of things, they're instrumenting fields uh, to be able to, to really see what works in, in the production environment. And, and Corteva is working closely with them and other companies like Bex Hybrids, who are, who are a privately owned, very large seed company in Indiana. It's, it's, a, it's a very exciting space. And I, and I think it's an area where academe and industry have come together to really leverage the advantages that you have in Indiana. It is an exciting space. And we look at the future of plant science, of, of crop protection. Just last year, Ag Funder reported that 1.1 billion in venture mm -hmm. flowed into the ag biological space. And so I, as, I, as I look at this and you sort of zoom out, you talked about Purdue, Purdue being the number one school in the country when it comes to ag biological engineering, really exciting to see the, the strength that is resident here, here in Indiana. It's also one of the clusters where you know there's not a lot of competition. When you look at other regions of the world and, and of the United States, it's an industry that's consolidated in just a few places. Um, in yeah. the US, it's, it's Research Triangle Park in North Carolina. It's um, St. Louis, you know, with the obviously the, the Bay of Monsanto, and and it's Indiana uh, with Corteva. That those are the real hubs for the plant sciences industry um, in the United States, and you're very well positioned. Absolutely. And Deb, now we get to the final. We get to the final innovation platform. This is Ag Equipment Systems and Technology. I affectionately refer to it as Ag Tech. And as a guy who used to be in tech and a guy who used to run a John Deere dealer, I love uh, it's like children. Right? I love them all. Um, this is this is one that takes particularly special meaning to me. So walk us through what what is in the Ag Tech innovation platform and give us some idea what's there. 
Sure. And so if you haven't quite caught on to our theme, we also were going to say, and this is one of the most exciting innovative <laughs> the most exciting. Uh, because it really is. And, and I think that for all of us, as we think about farming of, of even 10, 15 years ago and what we are now doing today and, and the implementation of really this convergence of technologies in the agricultural space, whether it's equipment, whether it's the digital technologies, whether it's the automation and robotics, and then all of the advanced analytics. This is really the space where computer science, computer engineering, and agriculture meet. And, and to me, what's so exciting about what's happening in Indiana is this is where a huge amount of the startup companies are coming yes. from and the early stage investments are going. And I think that a lot of the large OEMs are looking at this activity and are excited to see what Indiana is doing and what the future of, of agricultural production will be. And again, we, we talked about Purdue strengths and plant science and crop protection and it's huge, but Purdue strengths also in this ag tech space is going is, is only growing and, and with a real concerted effort. So the Wabash Heartland Initiative Network, WIN, which is based out of the West Lafayette, Lafayette region, was a Lilly endowment really focused on the intersection and convergence of advanced manufacturing right. with agricultural technology around the Internet of Things and how can companies be advanced in this space to really be at the forefront of what modern agriculture, modern manufacturing is going to look like. And the convergence in those spaces, I think, are incredibly exciting for that region, but more importantly, are incredibly exciting for the entire state because Indiana is known as an agricultural leader, is known as an advanced manufacturing leader. And as we, and as these new technologies come to market and scale and grow, there's just gonna be tremendous impact. And we're already seeing that it, it has the highest rate of growth. It, it comes from the smallest space, but it has the highest rate of growth from, uh, from the period we looked at 2012 to 2018, 15.6%. I think we're just going to see an explosion of that over the next few years. I agree. And as we look at some of the uh, adjacent industries and we look at technology specifically, Indiana has had over $7 billion of tech transactions here in the last decade alone. And when you look at the talent that has fueled those companies that have ultimately been acquired by Salesforce and Oracle and SAP, and the list goes on and on, that talent is still resident here. And you think about being able to connect the data science talent, B2B software talent with our strength in agriculture here in Indiana, I think you're exactly right, Deb. I think we are destined for some great things to come as we get into our next report. Talking with Simon Tripp and Deborah Cummings from Techonomy Partners about new research detailing Indiana's ag bioscience economy. You can download it and read it online at agronovasindiana.com slash research. That's agronovasindiana.com slash research. Simon and Deb, it's going to the lightning round. We are getting ready to wrap up. So we're going to make these quick. Uh, let's, uh, let's go to you first, Simon. You look at, at different economies, different industries all across the country. As you dug into this research report, you got into the data. What are some of the things that surprised you about the ag bioscience economy here in Indiana? I think what really stands out for me in Indiana is the diversity that you have with these platforms. So if you look at a lot of a lot of state economies around ag biosciences, you know, they're good in one thing and there's a good opportunity in you know, let's say, you know, um, you know, manure management or, or, or some niche area of ag biosciences. But in Indiana, you're covering the bases with animal strengths, with plant sciences strengths, with converting products into value-added technologies and doing a good job of this convergence under, under digital ag and technologies. Um, that bodes well because you're not dependent on only one sector to advance your ag bioscience capabilities. You're diversified and protected because of that. Love it. Deb, lightning round question for you. We, I, I may have an idea of where you're going to head with this, but I think it's important. Again, you look at lots of different regions, lots of different industries, lots of different economies. You saw the data, you looked at the trend data from 2012 to 2018. What are you most bullish on about Indiana's economic growth in the ag bioscience? A certain sector, um, a certain area, where it may be. You seem to have frozen, Deb. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? 
Yes, yes. loud and clear. Okay. Great. Um, so I think we've already gone through the fact that uh, we're excited about all four platforms. And so you know, we, we, can, we can arm wrestle over the one that's most exciting. But as I step back and look and think, it's not any one particular platform because as Simon indicated, the diversification and growth and tremendous opportunity in all four is really what makes Indiana unique. And what I'm most excited about is, you know, we had to have a cutoff date of 2018, but we looked at 2019 and what's happened in 2020. And when you look at the level of risk capital investment, when you look at the number of companies who have announced expansions in the state, when you look at the number of companies who's chosen to put, whether it's their North American headquarters or significant uh, expansion from other states, we're not seeing that in a lot of other areas, particularly within the Midwest. And so I think that this just really says that Indiana, through its efforts, through Agronovus and through the regional partnerships, you know, is really putting a, a stake in the sand and, and really is announcing itself to the world and is being noticed by the world. And I think that's really very exciting. Uh, it's fantastic. And what great wind in the sail as we wrap things up. Simon, any final thoughts? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've been very impressed with what Agronovus has accomplished. Um, in, in the study, we actually did a bit of benchmarking and looked at, at 11 organizations in the U.S. and internationally. Um, and we found Agronovus to have pretty much the best coverage of thinking about ag biosciences as an ecosystem that needs to be developed and nurtured. Um, it, it's, it's impressive what's been accomplished. Thank you. Wouldn't, couldn't have been able to do it without you and Deb and the entire Taconomy team. Deb, any final thoughts? No, we're just excited to continue to watch the progress of the ag biosciences in Indiana and uh, have the opportunity to to reflect in a few years uh, all the additional progress that's been made. Terrific. Simon Tripp, Deborah Cummings from Techonomy Partners, thank you so much for the incredible work that you've done, all of the effort that you've poured into making this research not just insightful, but actionable. Huge thank you to our Agronovus Indiana team. Simon, great, great insight. Thank you. And credit goes to the entire Agronovus team for this research and all the work that's happened here in Indiana. And special thank you to our partners, our partners in government, our partners in business, our partners in academia, and our partners in venture capital who are making the ag biosciences in Indiana a key and critical part of the Indiana ag bioscience economy and the broader economy here in Indiana. If you'd like to stay in touch with us, like to hear new news coming out, feel free to follow us online via social media, and you can always find us on YouTube as well. Again, Simon Tripp, Deborah Cummings from Techonomy Partners, thank you so much for the work. Again, don't forget to log on, find our research, take a listen, or take a listen or read at agronovusindiana.com slash research. That's agronovusindiana.com slash research. On behalf of the entire Agronovus Indiana team, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I look forward to seeing you soon.